<laughs> okay, the first item of business is we'll have the town clerk read the posting of the warrant. Here you go. Pursuant to within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Sunderland by posting up attested copies of the same at the town office building, the Sunderland Public Library, and the Sunderland Post Office, 14 days at least before the date hereof as within directed. Frederick A. Laurinaitis, October 12, 2017. Thank you. We apparently have a valid meeting. Thanks everyone for coming out. And there are a number of, of the articles tonight that will require a two-thirds vote. And there are two ways we can do it. One is we can count them, or we can vote to allow the moderator to call the two-thirds majority without a count if there is a, we'll say, a minimum of dissenters to the article. And in order to do that, we need a motion from the floor. We're not taking away the right to have your votes counted because if you're not satisfied with the outcome of the moderator, then uh, seven people from the floor can request that we have a counted vote. <clears throat> so to expedite the meeting, I would uh, entertain a motion that the moderator be allowed to call a voice vote uh, on these two-thirds articles. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And the second thing is, uh, I'd like to see if, since everybody has a copy of the okay, motion, the article, uh, that will dispense with the reading of the motions. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to dispense with the reading of the articles. So, we'll start with Article 1. Okay, the town clerk informs me that I've screwed up. <laughs> we did not vote on the dispensing of the reading of the motions, so we need to vote on that. All those in favor of not reading the motions, please say aye. Aye. All those in favor, and I can propose <laughs> Okay, Article 1. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 1, please. I'll second. Okay, motion's made, seconded for Article 1. Is there any explanation? I'd like to uh, explain what the article is about, if I could. Could I? Yep. Good evening, my name is Gary Greer. I live on Falls Road and I'm a member of the Community Pathways Committee. Um, I'd like to try to give a little bit of background on this article um, to help and then answer any questions that people might have. The other day in a conversation with the select board, Selectman Bergeron commented that, that this is an article that requires about 14 different things lining up to be able to move forward. And I thought it was a really apt way to think about um, this particular action that we're taking tonight. In fact, those things began to have to align a number of years ago when in previous town meetings, um, we have voted to approve funds for planning for this project, acquiring lands um, to allow for this project, and now tonight we are at a point where we have applied for state grants to be able to support um, funding for it. Um, and our vote tonight is about getting the community support to be able to accept 
town some funds from the state um, if we are fortunate enough to win that um, and recognize that there would be a future vote uh, by town meeting uh, to see if there is um, Community Preservation Act funds available to be able to complete it. So although the article talks about $295,000 and appropriating that amount of money, that is kind of a, a step that has to be done in order for us to accept um, funds from um, the Commonwealth um, in a community park grant. So that's the general context. Um, the project that we were talking about is a community or a riverway park that links a number of key features down in the school street um, area, linking our ball fields, linking the Connecticut River uh, with a little walkway along that, uh, a boat launch that is being improved through state funding, um, linking the, the uh, Veterans Memorial, the library, and sort of that whole complex of facilities. Um, many of you are familiar with the popular walking routes here in town um, in North Silver and along North Main Street um, or along South Main um, and through the, the school property here. What we really think of um, in this project is that we're creating an additional loop that accesses one of Sunderland's um, premier um, natural resources, the Connecticut River. When the Community Pathways um, project got going a number of years ago, we recognized that other than the boat launch, which is not in terribly good repair today, um, other than that boat launch um, and a, an overlook from the Riverside Cemetery, there was really limited opportunities for Sunderland residents to be able to get down um, to get a pretty good view of the river and take advantage of that natural resource. This pathway follows a natural um, shelf above the river, offering great views of Mount Sugarloaf and the Connecticut River, um, and connecting the, um, the improved boat launch along with the ball fields. So it creates an additional about half mile walking loop um, to encourage people to get out and enjoy those assets um, uh, and create other opportunities for um, and rationales for people to go down to um, to that part of, of town and enjoy those uh, that public land. Um, we have recognized, you know, I was the chair of the Recreation Commission 20 years ago when when my kids were young. Um, I've been fairly involved down there in the past, um, but for many generations of of uh, Sunderland residents, there's few reasons to go down there once your children are beyond um, uh, uh, young athlete um, age. So we felt that this is really a wonderful opportunity to re uh, uh, reimagine that uh, that space that not only serves our uh, youth uh, in their athletic endeavors, but also can serve a wide range of residents who want to go down um, and enjoy that space. Um, there's been a number of questions. We had a uh, visit down there with folks the other day about maintenance of, of this facility. Um, we purposely uh, planned for this river walk to be a stone dust surface which was firm enough to be able to roll a wheelchair along, but it's also easy enough to maintain, especially as we see from how high the river is today. Um, if there was a flood there that impacted that pathway and work was to tear up an asphalt surface there, um, that would be a very expensive fix. Um, repairing a stone dust surface is something that volunteers can do. Um, a number of us have, have spent a fair amount of time there opening up that pathway to date. Um, no trees have had to be taken down in there. Um, in fact, we've managed with the assistance of Fish and Wildlife Survey, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, to eliminate a number of uh, invasive species. Um, um, that have been getting in there. Um, so really with controlling some um, nuisance um, vegetation and some very um, modest um, 
um, lopper work um, uh, in there. We've been really been able to open up a path that is very walkable today, um, and we would plan to continue to maintain that um, with volunteer services down the down the road. Thank you, Gary. One quick question in terms of point of information. <clears throat> If I understand it right, it's a facilitatory borrowing to allow us to apply for a grant. Do we actually have to borrow the money or just make the commitment to borrow the money? I don't know the answer to that. Sherry, can you answer the that? The answer is yes, we have to borrow the money. It's a reimbursement grant. So the town upfronts the project costs and then we're reimbursed by the state through the grant. Okay, so we're actually going to borrow the money. We will go out and borrow the money in anticipation of the... Um, and Sherry, just to clarify, would we not borrow the money until we know what the, um, how much we're getting from the Commonwealth? Right. That if you look at the article, the wording is contingent upon a couple of actions. Mike, The grant is contingent upon receiving grant funds from the state and also for the local match, which would um, come from CPA funds probably in the spring. So that, it's a really important point that yes, we would borrow the funds. However, until we hear how much we are going to receive from the Commonwealth, we would not, um, we would not borrow um, the money. Um, it's very possible that the Commonwealth, um, given its financial resources, um, will not give us the full amount, and therefore we would limit the project scope to be able to reflect um, um, what we receive there. If we don't receive anything, then it's a moot point. We're, we're not going forward with it without those Commonwealth funds, um, and there would be no reason to um, then pursue the matching funds at the Springtown money through the CPA. Thank you. Any questions? Discussion? Peter? Peter Guerin, North Main Street. Um, I have a question about the last comment that Gary made, that it's a moot point if you don't get the grant here. There's nothing in the writing of the article here that uh, doesn't leave it open uh, indefinitely to uh, the receipt of uh, whatever grants uh, in order to move forward with this. Now, I'm not saying I'm complaining about this, I'm just, doesn't seem to me to be written that way. Uh, Use mic, yeah. So if you look at the, the motion, Peter, and without the, without the lawyer is after the motion, so it's about a long way down. About one third of the way down, you see a sentence that says, Assessors Map 5, including without limitation, the sentence following, without limitation, all costs incidental and relative thereto, provided, however, that no funds expended until a town has received a grant or commitment or allocation for a portion of such costs under the so-called park grant program. So we don't do anything without park grant. Right, but the project talks about having to do this this year because there is a, a grant round yep. that is coming imminently. I don't know the timing, but it's coming very soon. Um, I'm assuming that this is the kind of state program that may have succeeding grant rounds. So that if we do not get approved in this grant round, this does not make this moot, okay? This continues as town authorization to go forward with this, just waiting until at some future point we get a state grant. Now, now, now I'm, not, I'm not objecting to that because I think this is a good project, but I want to make it clear that that's the situation as far as I see it. Short of short, short sitting in the article at a future meeting, that's correct. So it's just, it's open-ended, right. just so we understand that. Absolutely right. Thank you. It's, it's open-ended, but we still wouldn't borrow any money until we knew exactly how much. Right. Again, it's exactly correct. So if we don't get the grant, we wouldn't spend anything, so we wouldn't borrow the money this go around. That, that's also correct. And again, at a future town meeting, if the grant process is such, we find it completely dried up and it's not available, we simply rescind this article and it's done. Okay. And what's the thinking as far as if we get a smaller grant? 
a smaller grant? Suppose we get a grant for, for half or two-thirds of the amount that you've, you've, you've shown here with the figures. I, 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 oh, sorry. No, I, I think Gary had alluded to earlier that we, you could scale, the project is designed such that you could scale it down. So say you got funded for two-thirds of what your original request was. You could then work on two-thirds of the project. And the fact that we have, uh, through this, that we would, through this article, authorize the full 295000 um, and yet, in fact, much less might be covered by a state grant, doesn't leave us open to, therefore, a commitment to pay the rest of it out of just town funds? Is that a problem? Uh, it's a contingency we hadn't explored. Okay. I mean, I'm still going to vote for this. I just hope you guys understand that when we authorize something, we yeah. really do authorize it. I yep. <laughs> Anyone else? <clears throat> All right. We'll vote on the article then. All those in favor of Article 1, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed to Article 1, please say nay. Nay. All right. I'm going to declare that the ayes have it. The article passes. Article 2. Uh, I'd like to move Article 2, Mr. Moderator. Uh, second. Any explanation of why we want to change the lights? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Moderator, if I could, uh, this is the second pass of a uh, town meeting. Uh, the first pass of town meeting. I'm trying. Is that better? You just have to be really close. Got it. Okay. So this, this is the second pass at uh, town meeting for uh, changing our uh, street lights to, from a variety of sources, high pressure sodium or metal halide, to LED. The first was to adopt the statute. And the second was to enter into an agreement with the, uh, the provider, current provider, Eversource. This is the last piece of our expenditure for streetlight upgrade uh, from those two sources to LED. This has the town, with the, with the approval of this article, has the town actually purchasing fixtures and then the administration of said fixtures across the community. And that's a direct replacement of existing locations with in-kind lighting sources. The goal, of course, was to reduce our energy uh, annual appropriation. And that's really the nut here. So we've got a window of opportunity with green communities, incentives from the utilities, and now this $12,398 of this article, changing our streetlights in the existing format, in the existing locations, and I'll expand on that in a second. And the town ends up owning those pieces. We, of course, would contract out with somebody uh, to maintain those. There is a protocol for additional fixtures being installed with a cost structure if people or public safety wants to expand on that. Not unlike the current format, there's two areas of concern with respect to this. The first, of course, is the utility owns all of the poles and then the facilities, facilities, would be owned by the town. So we're on the hook for maintenance in the future. These fixtures are to be replaced in kind and in current location with the appropriate cutoff, meaning uh, the quality of the light and the color of the light. The expectation is that we have with this expenditure about a, it says 3.4, figure three and a half year payback on the remainder of this investment. It happens immediately in our energy line in the, in the budget cycle that they are implemented in, and those savings were in the tune of 10,000 plus dollars annually coming off of uh, the operating budget. So that's what this article is about. Mr. Moderator. Yeah, please. Yeah. One of the things that sometimes is confusing for all of us is that we talk about uh, green communities and we talk about savings and, and how do we actually know there's actually savings being made? Well, we were just notified, just for instance, we were just notified today, we got notification from green communities that the town of Sunderland since our base date of 2011 
have saved 24% on our energy with, with the products that we have done. Our, our energy consumption has been reduced by 24%. So the goal was 20% when we came in 2011 and we've actually reduced by 24% and we're still going, we're still, we got more projects to do and we feel very confident. But sometimes we don't, we never give a, we never see a relation. We never go back and see that relation. But just to let you know, we are saving money, uh, we are saving electricity, and this is a, another good step forward for us. <laughs> it, 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 it more, it more importantly, comes up every uh, May when we talk about the budget. But I hear you. Okay, so the art, the article says that we're going to save money by switching light fixtures. It's correct. The appropriation here is the final step in implementing a three-step program. This buys the fixtures and covers the installation costs. Sure. Okay, any other questions? All right, we'll vote on Article 2. All those in favor of Article 2, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Very Article 3. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 3. Second. Okay, any explanation? So, Mr. Moderator, for a decade now, the fine folks at FCAT have been providing uh, peg access service for us, and uh, as they are currently tonight. Um, prior to this budget year, the license agreement fees, follow this, this actually is a line. It's kind of like salmon swimming upstream. The license fees that are paid to the town from Comcast flowed through to FCAT. We always asked for an operating budget and a capital budget for FCAT, <clears throat> excuse me. And at the annual town meeting, you'd see on the revenue side, you'd see peg access revenues used. This current year, the state accounting folks have said to actually account for that, you have to have it come in the right, the left-hand side, in the, in the form of a revenue, that's license revenue that Comcast pays. And then you have to appropriate it. We never appropriated prior to this year. We had a multi-year agreement with, Comcast, with FCAT. They provided a budget, the board voted on the budget. The budget then was shown in the form of the revenue stream. So the accountant, being the good accountant he is, came forward and said, I'm not paying their bill this year because there's no, there's no expense. Anyway, long story short is this revenue sits right now in the PEG access account and needs to be flown through, flowed through to FCAP. In future budget years, you'll now see and be prepared for people who show up at annual town meeting, you're gonna see a $59,000 budget jump. It's FCAT's line that we actually have to have in the accounting. We flow money in, we have to, we have to appropriate it out. And I think there's a lot to be said about that from the accounting perspective, as this body is a legislative body of the town. You're supposed to, in their minds, and I think rightly so in my mind, I agree, be the arbiter of where those monies go to. So this job right here, this article, is effectively making sure that FCAT gets the money that we have already committed to them in the current accounting format. And you'll never see an article like this again. <laughs> So it's basically a housekeeping article to get things Well, it was, it was actually away. a change in the statute, right. So right now, FCAT, to their credit, they've been paid one quarter's worth. They'll be paid the remaining three quarters worth in this exact same accounting format we've had. But this body right here didn't appropriate that money no. prior to the requirement that this year they do. Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> Sounds like money we have that we're going to transfer. Peter. So does the, uh, does the PEG access fund, whatever that is, um, is that a wash for the town? Has that been a wash preceding years and, and for this year? Yeah. Specifically, Peter, it comes from the license agreement with Comcast. And, and, this, and on, a, on a 
on a fiscal year basis, it's a wash also? Uh, it's correct. It's a wash. The town actually uses a portion of peg access for uh, the web hosting for, we were allowed inside the peg access, not to get too deep in the weeds, we're allowed to use it for anything that's public communications. So in this license agreement, the town actually has, and you actually do vote on the telecommunications line, part of this peg access money flows into that. That was easy, we voted that. We have to move this money from where it's currently sitting to uh, FCAT's new line, and we're gonna see that new line continuing and moving forward. Does any percentage of this money um, get used, and it'll be a small percentage, get used to cover the town's administrative costs in managing this? It's been done in other cases. We've used a little, you know, it's a great question because there was some pushback originally when we talked about electricity costs in the town office building, a little bit of square feet at the town office building, and some administrative work in making sure that it flows through. There is some of that, and we can get the accountant's report, which will show where that's used. I think it's like 12 grand a year in telecommunications. That comes straight from PEG access. That's not raised on the rate anywhere. So that, in effect, is a source of funds to cover town operating expenses. The element that's directly related to public communications, yes. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right. We'll vote on Article 3. This only requires a majority vote. All those in favor of Article 3, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Declare unanimous. Article 4. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 4, please. Second. Okay. Looks like we need to pay off a piece of equipment. Any explanation? It's for the final lease payment for the um, tractor for the highway department, the Holder tractor, uh, due to an oversight that the last payment was left off the annual town meeting uh, warrant article. So again, it's just a housekeeping article. That'll pay the final lease payment. If you're wondering what a holder tractor is, that's the one that they plow the, the uh, sidewalks with. Just a point of clarification, it's actually a whacker, not a holder. For those checking. <laughs> the holder was the old one. So oh. If you see a holder running down the street, we didn't pay for it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Okay, any questions? Do you want to amend that, Mr. Moderator? Hmm? Do you want to amend that? <laughs> you want to amend it? It's up to you, sir. It's your department We should have amended that. Yeah. You guys want to amend it? Specified. Yeah. They want to amend the name of the tractor. Jim? <laughs> Thank you. My apologies. Second. <laughs> He's writing it out right now. It has to be received in writing. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, I'd like to uh, substitute, uh, substitute the word whacker for a whole. <laughs> <laughs> Move the amendment. <laughs> okay, is there, okay, motion's been made and seconded for amending Article 4 to change the Highway Department Holder Tractor to Highway Department Whacker Tractor. <laughs> Love it. Okay, we have to vote on that change. <laughs> All those in favor for going from Boulder to Wacker, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Aye. <laughs> Pass. Okay, now we need to vote on the main article. And because we're taking money from stabilization, when we take put money in or out of stabilization, it always requires a two-thirds vote. So all those in favor, Article 4, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. 
declare it unanimous. Article 5. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to move Article 5. Second. Motion's made and seconded to move Article 5 for some design and engineering services for complete streets project. Is there any discussion? Explanation. This is essentially to pay for our engineering share of a number of projects that we're doing and we've received grant money for for the complete streets project. And that ranges from um, working on some sidewalk extensions and other various highway improvements. I, could, I can go through the list. We've got a number of things here. And, uh, actually, yes, and you've got a handout. You can see the list of improvements there. What is the definition of a complete street? I'll, I'll take a shot at it, but it's the state, the state in some of their um, government restructuring, they come up with what they call the Complete Streets Project, and it's a way to, rather than focus your street work and, and highway projects strictly on automobiles, it's a way to take a step back and look holistically and say, you know, when we're working on a, a street project, say like North Main Street, for instance, it's not just cars that use the area. There's bicyclists, pedestrians, and, and a number of other ways to get around. So this, uh, this allows an approach to look at all those different avenues and to try to approach it in a, in a more structured way and not think just about cars and then afterwards have to realize, oh, well, we have to go back and put in a bike lane or we missed a crosswalk here. Handicap accessibility. And, and yes, and handicapped accessibility. Because you notice in a number of streets now where you see when you come to a corner where the sidewalk dips down and there's that little dimpled access ramp, like things like that, that you have to incorporate public in there. Public transit. That, actually, too, that's true public yeah. transit, which we do have some of in town, so. Mr. Moderator, if I may, please. Um, I'd like to, express the board's appreciation to our town administrator. One of the hard parts for a small town is to get in, get in line or get even considered for a grant. Um, Sherry's gone out of her way to attend meetings. Um, believe it or not, to, be, to get a complete street grant, you have to be complete street educated first. And Sherry has gone, Sherry has gone to those meetings She's taken the entrance, uh, gotten committees together to move it forward. If, if you take an opportunity to look under what we're proposing, um, there's things that our town, there's 300,000 plus dollars, there's, there's money that we would never be able to come up with um, to do these projects. And I think most of us that have walked on North or South Main Street, just more South Main Street will attest to the condition of some of our walkways. The, these are some things that have been very, been put aside for many, many years. Um, Sherry recognized that she took the opportunity to go out, and I would just like to express our thanks from the board and from the town for all the hard work she's done on this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, so again, this money is to complete the design phase so that then we could access grants to support the projects. If I could, Mr. Moderator, this is the town's uh, commitment for both uh, review, uh, review of design and uh, oversight of implementation of each of the tasks. The town has to hire an engineer to do that. We solicited three bids. Capital Improvement Committee uh, looked at the original number, felt that the 10,000 that was originally being asked would not be enough in the form of hours for this kind of both diversity of project as well as the hastened, the hastened implementation schedule. So this article has an appropriation of $20,000 and not unlike what this board's done uh, with the permission of, of this body, any monies that are, are not used simply stay. We, this isn't necessarily $20,000 worth of engineering, but frankly, we don't like coming back and asking for more. So anyway, that's, that's it. Okay. Any questions? Peter. Uh, 
Um, I have a question about the financing of this whole project. Uh, my understanding is it's a state grant, essentially. That's correct. But the state grant does not cover design and engineering? It doesn't, con it doesn't take care of uh, contract documents and oversight. Are there and other stuff it doesn't take care of? Nope. This is it for us. And after this, the state covers everything? Correct. $394,000 plus. Dollars. And if projects don't come in on budget? That's their problem. Not our problem. Correct. That's good. Um, and the reason this is coming out of stabilization, is, is that because it should or also because we don't have free cash at this point? Free cash certification was, is being actually submitted uh, the first part of this coming week. And stabilization is an available fund that's appropriate in this case here because all this constitutes capital work. Okay, so this, not, this is not something where we take out of stabilization but then sort of make a, a, a plan to return it to stabilization when free cash was available? I think, I think specifically, Peter, with this line, the answer is no. We have a, a stabilization and free cash use guideline, and it's, it's not uncommon in the last couple of years uh, to have this value plus put back into stabilization in a form of replenishment. Right. And I think this is a good example of how that program, that discipline at the town office building has really been helping the town out. $20,000 to manage nearly 400000 That's good stabilization use. Oh, I'm not arguing with that. You know, the finances are obviously but, very favorable, but right. you still have to do things right in the town for Correct. the town share. And there's no change in that policy. I'd expect that, I'd expect that in the normal budget process, the percentage of our free cash or available revenues going back to stabilization would likely exceed this, as it has in years past. So with this approved and the other things approved at this meeting, Great. what will stabilization be if, if going question. forward? So we're, and I, I, I remiss in, in not putting this out forward. We're starting with uh, $621,223 in stabilization. We go through this appropriation process tonight uh, with uh, $59,000, uh, 59509 being removed from stabilization with a remaining balance of 561714. And with what we're submitting to the state for free cash certification, do you have any sort of uh, guesstimate as to what that number will turn out to be? I didn't, I didn't want the accountant to blush this morning. So when we were at our finance team meeting, I didn't ask, but I'll get back to you in about a week. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We'd like to have the stamp on it first, Peter. Yes. Liz? Usually have a pretty good idea. I agree. <clears throat> Liz still in South Main Street. Um, is the design all, I realize I'm a little late to the party here, but is, are the designs all fixed and decided on with respect to this complete streets project? Is that a standard design? And you know, yeah. Dan? Where's Dan? Dan? Yeah. Dan? <laughs> He's an engineer. <laughs> so, the, the projects were selected from the prioritization plan. But there is a design phase, so you know the fine details of every, you know, what's going to happen with each project. There's still some time to, to weigh in on that. One of my concerns is that, of course, South Main Street is a National Register Historic District, and I can't really tell from the description whether we're going to be changing the character of the green strips on either side that are sort of part of the defining nature of a north-south. Uh, green that was, you know, the linear streets in the history of our town, and it's just, I just want to make sure that we're really mindful of that as we look at the project. Great point. Good. Peter. <clears throat> uh, sorry, one more. Just because it obviously has left off this list, though it's far from being a complete street, uh, what's the current uh, plan as far as getting North Main Street uh, something other than the chaos it is? Do you want to talk about that? Because I ride my bike on it all the time, and it's dangerous as could be. Sure. Uh, if we could, uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, we just had a series of exchanges with the engineer who's working on that tip, which is actually state and federal money, going up and down on North Main. Those questions have been answered or been resubmitted to the state. So in that, in that project, which is two point one, two point three million dollars, million dollars worth of work because it's above ground and below ground. That said, uh, we have, we as a town through public comment have worked with the engineer to push back on what's called standard design. It doesn't turn into a giant blacktop surface. It's really important to bear in mind the aesthetics. 
we just got the last set of feet, the most recent set of feedback from uh, DOT was that some of the elements were being pushed out of District 2 for review on what we asked for for exceptions. So our timing is still, I don't know, our TIP schedule is 20 or 21? 2020 right now. Right now 2020 for that project. That's where we're scheduled. These answers have got to get back from the state about the exceptions that we asked for, narrowing of ways, uh, total blacktop surface, setback to the sidewalks, uh, and that's where we're at. So we, our first phases, was our first phase exceptions were actually accepted, and then a handful of questions came back. So I'm frankly a little bit excited about that. But so we're talking three years at least under the current, with the, with the current conditions at best. Uh, with, without major construction, that's correct. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, if I may. Um, just so all those projects are independent projects, you may, you may start hearing about a third project, and that's the, uh, they're talking about doing the state, the state is talking about doing something with a center uh, 47, 116 inter, intersection. So I, I would, you know, we haven't got into, they haven't they talked to us, us yeah. they haven't yeah. talked to us a whole bo bunch about it. But we have heard that that's something that's on their radar screen about doing something with that, that intersection. So if that concerns you or you want to be involved with that, I would pay attention. Um, and we also have a new uh, newsletter that's being sent out uh, quarterly, right, Sherry? Right. That's being sent out quarterly. So if you want and that any anything that we hear about that intersection would be definitely in that uh, quarterly newsletter. So if you want to sign up, you can uh, talk to Sherry, uh, send her an email um, about that. But just so uh, we have heard um, that mm -hmm. the state may do something with that, the, the intersection again. Right. So if, if you are concerned, please stay, please stay uh, informed on that. Anyone else? All right, we'll vote on Article 5. Again, because it's coming from stabilization, it requires a two-thirds majority. All those in favor of Article 5, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. All right, just before we have a motion to dissolve, I was a little bit disappointed tonight in the Board of Selectmen. Being the night before Halloween, I fully expected that they would come in costume tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Came as elected officials. <laughs> 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 had to be pretty brave to do that. Mr. Moderator, I move to dissolve me. Need a second. Second. Motion's made and seconded to dissolve the meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, declare it unanimous. And again, thanks for everyone for coming out. <laughs>